Illustrator is the most precise and accurate program I have ever used. Every single element can be created, positioned and sized to the thousandth of a millimeter, yet you can also create elements freely and artistically. The choice really is yours. So let's take a look at using guides, layers and all the size and position data options and discover how to create and position artwork using shapes built from points, paths, fills and strokes. So we'll start out here once again inside our CMYK print campaign document with our three artboards and we want to focus on our A4 over here on the top right. So let's just go to the artboards and double click the A4 sheet name that takes us right there. Go ahead and close that down. Now before we start generating guides on the page, let's just go up to the view menu and go down to guides and go across and choose lock and this will unlock them so that once we drag them onto the page we can start moving them around and positioning them precisely which is very cool. Now we need to drag guides in from the rulers and the rulers will appear around the outside of our document if we press command R or control R on the PC and you again should note that our zero origin is in the upper left hand side of our A4. Now let's move to the top of this document so we can see. Now we're going to drag vertical guides in first, so just position the cursor in the left hand ruler and drag across and drop it anywhere on the page. Now you will notice it sort of snaps into the left hand page, but because there's nothing else on this page, there's nothing for it to snap to, so we can really position this wherever we need to. Now because we've got the guides unlocked, you can see that it's actually colored blue when we let go of it. Well that's because it's selected. If we click off and deselect it, it changes to this sort of cyan color, and that's because that's how our preferences are set up. If you press Command K or Control K on the PC to bring up your preferences dialog, go down and look at the guides and grid, you'll see this is the default color. So you can change that to whatever you need. Let's say you're doing a design that's full of cyan. doesn't make it very helpful to have cyan guides, so this is where you would go ahead and change that. Feel free to do so now. It's totally up to you. I'm just going to hit Cancel to go back out of here. The other cool thing is because guides are selectable, it also means if we highlight one and hit delete or backspace, we can actually get rid of it. So you don't need to drag it off the page or anything else. Simply select it and remove it. Now let's drag in another one. Once again, click on the left hand ruler and drag in. And this time, hold down your shift key and you'll notice that if you look in your ruler up here towards the top, it's snapping into the increments. Now, depending on your screen size that you're using and also the size of your document and indeed your measurement system, you may get different increments than this. But if we're looking at millimeters on this A4 page, we should be getting roughly the same amount. So this is very cool because I know that this is precisely 50 millimeters into the page. So if I back up one, two, three, four increments, and these are five millimeters at a time, I know I can drop that at precisely 30 millimeters across. Now we can double check this by coming up to the control panel up here and you may have already noticed there are X and Y values for our guides. But in this case, I'm looking at pixels, but our, our document is in millimeters. Well, you might also be seeing something different. If you've been playing around with different documents in Illustrator, perhaps between these chapters, it will change according to the last document that you had open. The same reason our color palette over here is in RGB. So what we need to do is just force this into millimeters and a very quick, easy way to do that is to right click or control click on the Mac inside the top ruler here and simply choose millimeters again and you'll see that it snaps that in and there we can double check our X value for this guide is 30 millimeters in from the left hand side okay so quick and easy shortcut there for you now likewise we want another guide that's 30 millimeters over from the right hand side so I'm going to do the same click and drag bring it across with the shift key and lock it into 180 millimeters and again can double check that over here now the horizontal guides work exactly the same way. If we position our cursor in the top ruler, drag down, we have the same snap to page function, position it anywhere in the page and just drop, and we can go up into the control panel here and change the Y axis value. Now just so you know, we also have our transform panel over here. This is something we turned on earlier on. So if you go ahead and select that, you can get exactly the same information here. So let's say in this case, I want to position this one at 10 millimeters down. I'm going to key it in and hit enter and say yes. And that will automatically reposition this to exactly 10 millimeters. Now we're going to do another few guides as well. I want another one that's 10 millimeters up from the bottom. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Click and drag another horizontal guide so it drops to the bottom of the page. And even though that says 297 and we should reposition at say 287, I want to show you a really nice option here. I'm going to go ahead and close that down. Basically, any element that you have selected in Illustrator, if you need to move it and you need to move it by a specific amount, you can do so by bringing up what's called the move dialog box. And that, like I say, this is program wide. So any element, including guides, and this is what's cool. With this guide highlighted at the bottom of the page, just hit the enter key on your keyboard, okay? Lower right hand side of your keyboard, and that will bring up the move dialog box. So remember that because we'll use it a lot during this training. 
So our move value here gives us a horizontal and vertical choice. So horizontally, we're not going to move this guide anywhere, but vertically, we're going to move it by minus 10 millimeters, okay? Remember, we're going upwards and our zero is in the top left, so we're reducing, essentially, its Y position on the page. So minus 10 millimeters, okay? And if we just go to the next box and have preview turned on, okay, you can turn it off and on, you'll see that it has indeed moved 10 millimeters up here, and that's precisely where we want to drop it. So go ahead and click OK. Now, likewise, let's do some from the top here. Let's click and drag and pull down into the page, and I'll use the Shift key here, and I'm going to drag down to 120 millimeters, okay? So let's go down to here. That's 120. Once again, I can double-check up here that my Y-axis tells me just that. Now again, I'm going to have another guide at 10 millimeters below this. In fact, I want two evenly spaced 10 millimeters apart below this, okay? So first thing we'll do, bring up that move dialog box again. We're going to do a vertical movement this time of exactly 10 millimeters. This is in the plus value, okay? And here is our preview. But what we're doing here is we don't want to move the original. We want to leave it where it was and do a new one 10 millimeters down, okay? This basically saves us the trouble of dragging a new one down and repositioning it. Select an existing one, say move 10 millimeters, but go ahead and click copy. That will leave the original where it is, drop another one 10 millimeters down, and here's the final cool part of this. If we hit Command D or Control D on the PC, we will duplicate that function and give us another copy guide exactly 10 millimeters further down the page. So this is really very cool, and all of this is being done accurately simply on guides. I mean, you know, these are not objects, these are just page guides. Now let's also tidy up the guides, the vertical ones over here. I actually want them 20 millimeters in, so knowing what you know now, we can select our left-hand one, bring up the Move dialog, and go minus 10 on the horizontal and 0 on the vertical. Not that it really matters. Guides go the full distance of a document. Okay, we're just going to move that 10 millimeters in that direction, select the right-hand one, once again bring up the dialog box, and let's do plus 10 millimeters and say OK. Now, as you know, we could go up to the View menu, back down to Guides, and say Lock Guides, but that would lock all of them, and we can also hide guides the same way. But let's say you had another series of guides over here on our A3 page or something, and if you show and hide, you're going to show and hide all of them. Well, it is possible to position guides on a layer and make that layer specific to that page and just turn them on or off at will. So sometimes it's a good practice to do. It won't apply all the time, but I think for our design here, it'll do for now. So let's come over to our second dock of panels over here and click on the Layers one. And you'll see we're looking currently at layer one. So what we're going to do is simply double click that to bring up the layer options. And we'll rename this one A4 Guides, OK? Go ahead and click OK. Now you see we could click here and lock that. So all of those guides are now unmovable. They're locked in on that page. And we can also click the toggle visibility icon here to turn them on or off. If we had guides positioned on other layers, those would not be affected. So like I say, a little trick that you might want to bear in mind for future. Now, when it comes to building artwork on top of this, we are going to need another layer to work with. Now, there's a few different ways to do it, and I want to show you. The new layer icon is down here at the bottom of the panel. If we go ahead and click it, it will give us brand new layer 2, exactly what we're looking for, but it hasn't given us a dialog box to name it. We'd have to double-click it like we did with this one. Okay, well, let's undo that. This time, hold down the Option key or the Alt key on the PC and click the same icon. What you'll notice is it generates a new layer, but also brings up the layer options, allowing us to name it. Okay, very cool in itself. We can actually go one better than that. We can do this all by shortcut. Okay, you remember in our keyboard shortcuts earlier, we did take a look at the new layer keyboard shortcuts. Well, cancelling out that dialog box, all we need to do is hold down Command and Option or Control and Alt on the PC and hit L to give us a brand new layer and the dialog box at the same time, okay? So moving forward from this point in the training, whenever we need to generate a new layer, Command, Option, L or Control, Alt, L on the PC, that's going to give us exactly what we need here. So this one I'm going to rename Backdrop Color because we'll use it for the main background of all of our artworks in a short while and we'll go ahead and click OK and we can see that's now been added to the Layers panel. And one more thing I want to show you just before we finish up with Guides is you can also use grids inside of Illustrator and I just want to show you where they are. If you go to the View menu and go down below where we had Guides, you can see the Show Grid function. If you turn that on, you can see your document is being divided into basically a series of squares that are then subdivided into even more squares. Now this, again, is editable by bringing up your preferences and going back to the Guides and Grid, as you saw a second ago, and this is what we're looking at here. The grid color, the grid line, so this is the main square that we see in the background. It's currently set to 25.4 millimeters, which is the default. That's one inch precisely. 
then that inch is being divided into eight subdivisions. So depending on the size of your artwork and the measurement system that you're using, you can come in here and change that accordingly. And then naturally anything that you position or drag or move around on the page will be able to snap to those grid lines. So very handy for specific functions, but not something we're going to use at this point in time. So I'm just going to cancel out of there, go back up to the view menu and go down and hide the grid because now we're ready to actually start adding elements to our backdrop color layer.